you have your Bibles for a few moments, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 2, um, and I believe this will go right along with the play. Uh, I appreciate all of the children that did such a good job, don't you? Amen. And I know your parents and grandparents are uh, very proud of them, and you ought to be, because they did this for the Lord, and they did this to uh, glorify and praise Him. But Luke chapter 2, let's stand in honor of the Word of God. You've been sitting for a while. We're going to read verses 8 through 20. The family just read verses 1 through 7, and so I'm going to continue with verses 8 through 20. The Bible says, and they were in the same country, shepherds, uh, shepherds um, abiding in the field and keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shined about, uh, about them, around about them, and they were sore afraid. You would have been too. And the angel said unto them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angel was gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as was told unto them. You may be seated. You know, on this Christmas day, or this Christmas story, we see a great host of angels appearing to... Um, some shepherds, and uh, giving them some of the best news they could ever have. And I want to just close by saying this, is that um, there's a several gifts in Christmas that um, people cannot steal, and the government cannot tax. Say amen right there. And uh, thank the Lord, uh, they won't uh, uh, break in five days or five minutes. Uh, you'll be perfectly satisfied with these gifts, and it's just what you need. You ever got a gift and you kind of smiled and said, that's just what I needed. And you was lying through your teeth. You didn't need that, amen? You had four of them in the kitchen. But anyway, I want you to know this. The Lord knows what you need better than you know what you need. And I just want to give you several things real quick, or just a few things, on the gifts of Christmas. And of course, as the children have already said, the gift of Christmas is Jesus, amen? He is the greatest gift, and all these gifts are from the Lord. Number one, we see a message from heaven. We have the gift of God's word. In verse 8, it says, And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And shepherds were the low rung of society. They didn't have anything to offer anyone. And the Lord came to them with a message, and the Bible says, They said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I want to tell you, one of the greatest gifts that you can ever receive is the Word of God. God's Word is a gift. Many people died, was burned at the stake. I mean, was, went to jail for this Bible, the King James Bible, so we can have a word from heaven. I want to tell you something. When God speaks, you ought to listen. And when God speaks, you ought to realize it's God speaking. And His Word, 1,500 years, 44 different authors, 66 different books, not one contradiction. All the prophecy about the virgin birth in Isaiah came true exactly to the minute detail. Even that they would be born in Bethlehem 912 years before the fact uh, the prophet Micah said he'll be born in Bethlehem. It took tax to get him, tax to get him to uh, the, that place. And so I want you to understand this. Let me see if this is on. Amen. Oh, yeah, here we go. It, it, took, it, took, it took taxation to get them to the exact place where Micah would be true to his word. Now, folks, this gift of the word of God is precious 
because it gives you faith. The Bible says, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Where fear ends, faith begins. Where faith begins, fear ends. You know, this world's full of fear. There's a lot of fearful things, like not having presents on Christmas. <clears throat> That's a big fear, isn't it, children, that you would get nothing. Amen. Except a peanut butter sandwich. Amen. That's a, that's a real fear to a child. Amen. But folks, there's other fears. There's fears for the future and fears about marriage and <clears throat> fears about will the children turn out right. And I want to commend you parents and grandparents for having your children under the sound of the gospel. And we're, we're privileged and honored and, and thank God for you letting them come to this church and hear the greatest message they'll ever hear. And that's a message of peace. And the message of faith, because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So it's a, it's a gift, the Word of God. Then number two, I see there's joy. Joy. Everybody's looking for happiness. But I want to tell you this, friend. The joy of the Lord is different than happiness. Happiness depends on happenings. But joy depends on Jesus. Happiness depends on what you get for Christmas. Joy, children, is realizing that you have enough with Jesus, amen, and that you have everything that you need. But it's all right to get a few gifts too, amen. Come on, parents. But uh, I want you to know that the joy of the Lord is good tidings of great joy. These shepherds' lives was about to be changed completely forever because of this great message from on high that they would have joy from the, from the Lord. And this was a joy that's paid for by the sorrow of Calvary. And so, folks, I want you to see it very clearly is that God gives us joy. There it is. It says, great joy, which shall be to all people. And then I want you to notice also there's another gift, and that's the gift of God's guidance in verse 12. Guidance. This shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. He was, he was leading these shepherds from the hillsides of loneliness and insecurity and probably no significance, probably no purpose, and leading them and guiding his children by the word of God to a place of peace and goodwill, God's will. And God's will is a blessing. The Bible says that you can have the peace of God that passes understanding and that the, let, the, uh, let the word of God rule in your heart that you might have peace with God. And folks, I want to tell you something. There's peace in the will of God. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You're looking for peace this season? You're looking for joy? You're looking for purpose? You're looking for some rest spiritually? You can find it if you'll realize the greatest gift that you could ever have is God and His will and His word. Oh, folks, listen. Uh, last but not least, I believe that one of the greatest gifts that's described in this Christmas story is found in verse 15. And it came to pass, as angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which the, has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they made haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, a feed trough, just a little cave out back, a stable, a humble, humble birth. But I want to tell you something, friend. He gave up the splendor and glory of heaven and came to this earth and was born in this humble way and lived a humble life for 33 years and died a humble death on the cross of Calvary so you could be rich towards God. One of the greatest verses in the Bible uh, describing Christmas, and that's in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. I want to read it to you. It says in um, verse um, 8, it says... For we know, or, or 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for his sake he became poor, that, you, that ye through his poverty might be rich. I'm rich because I've got money that the world can't buy. I've got things that money can't buy. And I've got gifts that the thieves can't come and steal. They almost made it out the door with them, amen? And thank God for that, amen? And thank the Lord, folks, we got joy and peace and purpose. And that purpose is this. These shepherds begin to glorify God. 
I want to tell you the intended reason you're born and why you're here tonight. I'm not talking about in this auditorium. I'm talking about alive, born. Is because God created you for His glory. These shepherds were created for His glory. Mary and Joseph was created for His glory. God will give you a life with His presence, and that's the greatest gift there is. It's a life to glorify God. It's a life to uh, have His presence in your life to give you peace and security, love and joy. I'm talking about power to overcome death, hell, and the grave, and Satan. And so, folks, listen. As the Bible says in verse 17 and 18, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told unto them concerning the child. And, they, and it says, And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And it says, And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Those shepherds were never the same. And you, can, you can never be the same. If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, but all things become new. You have forgiveness of sin, and you have purpose in your life that supersedes everything in this world. And you can have the peace and the goodwill towards men, and most important of all, you can glorify God with your life. The Bible says it very clearly. That the angel of the Lord came unto them, the gift of God's word, and said unto them, Great joy, the gift of God's joy. But also said that, hey, unto you a Savior is born. Unto you. Let me just say this in closing. The gift of salvation, the gift of Christmas, is very personal. You can't get saved for someone else. You've got to get saved personally. You trust the Lord personally. My daddy was an alcoholic, burnt the house up, wrecked cars, uh, spent some time in jail. It was a terrible home life I lived in. I was such a nervous kid, I stuttered when I was five years old, and they sent me to special class when I was in the first grade. And I wanted my daddy to be saved so bad. I wanted him to get saved, and finally the Lord gave us the secret to winning my daddy to the Lord, and that was to show him the love of God. And he got saved when I was preaching. He was 63 years of age. He only lived seven years because of cirrhosis of the liver. And I want to tell you this, friend. On his deathbed, he said this. He said, Wayne, the only regret I have is I only lived seven years. Tell the children and tell everybody to get saved while they're young, while they have an uh, opportunity to live for God. My life is over. But I want to tell you something, friend. The last seven years of his life, he lived in peace and joy. He wasn't an addict towards the liquor. Thank the Lord. He loved mother and expressed it. And it was a whole new life. I wanted to run away from home, but I got hungry for a peanut butter sandwich. No, I wanted to run away from home, but I got hungry and came back. But after I got in the ministry down in South Georgia, I wanted to come home and catch my daddy awake past 7 o'clock at night, not passed out in his place. I wanted to come home and see him uh, reading his Bible, as he often did in that place in the den. And I wanted to come home the next morning, spend the night, and the next morning as he got up and hug Mama and say, I love you. I'm going to tell you something, friend. God changed his life. But I couldn't get saved for him. He had to get saved on his own. And second of all, I believe that the gift of Christmas is so precious, not only because it's personal, because it's paid for. Amen? I mean, it's paid for, paid in full. It's a gift of God. We don't have to get good enough to get saved. He was good enough to die on the cross. And then thank God, it is practical and it is perfect just for you. I want to tell you something. The gift of eternal life is, is fulfilling. Number one, you're going to heaven. That's, that beats going to hell, say so amen. But number two is you have some heavenly peace and heavenly joy and heavenly purpose on this earth before you get there. And that's the answer to prayer, his presence, his power, his word. And then I want you to know, last but not least, and this makes the gift so precious, there's a passion in that gift. It's personal, it's paid for, it's practical, it'll fulfill your life. 
But boy, I'm going to tell you something. There's some passion behind that gift. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ loved you enough to give himself for you and die for you. See, he took your sin. I preach a lot at the YDC. I've been preaching there 37 years. And I use this illustration many times at that YDC. And ch children, I never want to see y'all there. Amen? That's the youth jail. And uh, thank God, uh, I use this illustration many times about a judge that sentences somebody to death. And then, and the wage of sin is death, the Bible says. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then the judge takes off his robe. He comes down and says, but I'm going to take your death for you. And all that person has to do is believe that and receive that as a gift from the judge of judge and the Lord of lords, God Almighty, and they're saved. And so the judge becomes their savior. And I will tell you something, friend. The God of the universe can become your savior. And you can be in union with your creator, and it's got to go better to be in sync and will with him. And it's all because he loves you. One last verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. But you'll never have a Merry Christmas and you'll never have a Happy New Year until you trust and receive the gift of Christmas the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this night. I thank you, dear God, for these children that have touched my heart, thrilled my soul. God, just been a blessing. And God, I know their parents are so proud of them, and so, so thankful that they're in a church that uh, preaches the gospel. And so, Lord, tonight, I pray that you would help us to realize how wonderful it is to have the gift of Christmas, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. Lord, thank you, dear God, for um, this presentation of the gospel through this play. And thank you for your word. And thank you, dear God, for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I never preach without giving invitation. Every service, I try to give an invitation. At the jail, I give an invitation. At weddings, I try to give an invitation. At funerals, I give an invitation. And the reason I do that is because I might never see you again, or you might never see me again. And the Bible says the day is the day of salvation. We might not see anybody again. But it's wonderful to be saved. And I believe every day without the Lord is a wasted day. I believe with all my heart, the day is the day of salvation. So without any pressure, and certainly not any embarrassment, I want to give you an opportunity to let me do something for you for Christmas. And that's to pray for you. How many say, preacher, I know without a doubt that if I died today and if I live tomorrow, that I'm going to live for his glory and that I've been saved by the grace of God. I can look back to a time and place where I trusted in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I got saved. I know it. I can remember the time, the date even, but I know I'm saved. So I have full assurance that if I take my last breath, I know I'm going to heaven. How many are glad of that fact? You know you're saved. Would you raise your hand as a happy testimony? Nobody's looking around now. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. How many glad you're saved? Say amen. Oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. And I know the real purpose for the birth of Christ. He was born to die, and he died that we might live. Several could not raise your hand, and I'm not trying to embarrass you or put you on the spot. But the preaching of the gospel puts you on the spot, puts you in a fork of the road. You have to make a choice. And you'd say, preacher, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. If there's anything you ought to be 100% sure of is eternity and where you're going. Say amen there. And it's not through religion. It's not through works. It's the gift of Christmas, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'd say, preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved, but I sure would like to know. And I want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up humbly towards heaven? I won't come to you. won't embarrass you. won't point you out. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I see that hand. Anybody else, just slip your hand up. God bless you, ma'am. I see that hand. God bless you, ma'am. I see that hand. I was sitting 
in a pew one day when I got saved, and I thank God I got a conviction that I need to be saved. Anyone else? Just slip your hand up real high in the choir. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you're a church member, but you're not saved. God bless you. I see that hand. Anyone else before I pray? I want to pray for you. Yes, I see that hand. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? We're going to wait just a moment longer. Think about it. Don't let pride keep you back. Don't wait on a feeling. Because the devil will make sure you don't have a big enough feeling. Come by faith. Anybody else say, Preacher, remember me in your closing prayer. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I'd like to be. Anybody else? Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Our Father, thank you for the message from the Word of God. Thank you, God, for the play that presented the gospel so clearly. And I, Lord, I pray and thank you for those that's courageous enough and honest enough to admit they need you. They need the real reason for the season. They need the real reason for Christmas. They need the reason for life. And that's to glorify you. And Lord, we know it's not possible without knowing you as their personal Savior. And so, Lord, we're not talking about joining church or getting baptized. We're talking about receiving the free gift of salvation and turning our life, which is called repentance, turning our life to you and giving our life to you and trusting you to give us the power to do just that. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray during this invitation that as we come to this altar and pray, as Christians come to pray to draw closer to God during this season, God, that these that raise their hand to be saved would come and let us show them from the Bible with a trained counselor on this front row how they can know for sure that they're going to heaven. They can know for sure that they have the presence of God in their life and have the peace of God and dear God they have the power of God to overcome their weaknesses and their sin and so Lord please move and we'll thank you in Jesus precious name Amen